Alrighty, everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's performance shop, Lone Star Mobars.com. Sunday night, we got the ELCS game one, the Rangers and Astros going on. I left out the uh, middle of the second, it was 1 0 Texas, so we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. But uh, what we've got here is DRPD Tool Hall. I believe number 17, don't hold me to that, but I think it is. <laughs> and. It's going to be heavily focused on PB Swiss. So, uh, some of this stuff goes back to the Labor Day sale, and then another one, kind of the end item, actually goes back to the summer sale. And ultimately, I just really want to get that thing showcased so I can start using it some and uh, kind of formulate an opinion on it. So, if you're new here, we do timestamps, we do links. Timestamps are there for your convenience, as are the links. So, uh, anyone that buys from DRPD knows you oftentimes get this. <laughs> some items, you know, like they come in standalone packaging, they kind of fit in nicely. Uh, Coke and stuff's usually in like one of the cool little plastic bags. Uh, the pliers, you know, that you get, you know, they kind of come in retail packaging. But anything that's like a loose leaf item, like if we come back over here and we had PB Swiss Random Driver, right? It's going to come, if you got Phillips and uh, slotted, just kind of feel it out, see if you like the handles, see if you like the tips, see what the hype is. You're probably going to unroll this. You'll have driver one, keep rolling, driver two. So I figured it's fitting that we would do that here. So <laughs> let's get to unrolling, shall we? Uh, we're going to roll, roll, roll. And this is our first item. And if you're thinking like, okay, what's that? PB Swiss? It kind of looks familiar. Well, why would it look familiar? First off, let's try and identify what it is. It says Swiss made. Over here, we've got PB in the part number. you got a hanging hole. Seems to be like some sort of translucent material, maybe acetate you're saying. Hole there. Well, what do we do? Do we do we shove dissected screwdrivers into it? No, can't do that. It's not, not big enough. We'd have to drill it. Well, what if I told you we brought these in in the past and they were blue? And you think, hey, why'd you get red? Well, because the blue doesn't seem to be available anymore. And what it is, it's a file handle. I cannot tell you. Uh, how nice the file handle is. It's the proper way to do a file. Uh, used to be you would get like wood handled files. They would come in a set that way. And then it got to be where I guess all the files we bought, which most of the stuff I have is like hand-me-downs, you know, stuff in my granddad's toolbox or something, and none of them had handles. <laughs> and, uh, same thing at work. I can still go back and dig through bins and I'll find like old school Nicholson USA. Seems like that's the most recent stuff we had. And then like you dig a little deeper, you'll find like Simmons USA. It's getting harder and harder to find like a US made file anymore, at least readily available. So like this one right here for years and years and the tang was bent on this one. Not like terribly bad, but you know, it kind of has like that square shank and then we'll just kick out a little. I flattened that down with some, believe it or not, pliers wrenches. <laughs> uh, flattened those pliers and then the vise, of course, kind of hammered it home and uh, shoved it in here. And man, that's nice and I wish I would have done it years ago. Uh, that said, it was never a huge deal with this because you're usually just like widening a hole in sheet metal is what I'm typically doing with a round file. But this one right here, why did I get it? Well, it was red and I'm not as excited about red, but the practical standpoint, let's say that you've got a ton of files that need handles and multiple colors were available. I really wish they would do them like the magnets, which yes, this order had magnets. We've just showcased those already. They were for a four work <laughs> special edition. But uh, I think if you've got, you know, like your rough cut, your final cut, if you've got anything in between, if you've got, you know, like something that's explicitly for stainless or explicitly for brass or copper, that's where the color coding comes in handy. Actually, conveniently, I've always just kind of left this one out. There's a little Ghidorah file. Obviously, very, very thin, delicate, <laughs> purpose-built. But old school, you'd have kind of the, you know, file that looks like that. I grabbed this guy out of my granddad's toolbox because for some reason at the top, there was just a ton of files. So uh, if you're unfamiliar, this would be a Nicholson USA. They still look the same. I think it's like Crescent Nicholson, but they're not the same. They're just not the same. So uh, we'll take that and we'll kind of just shove her home and you've got a file on a handle now. And that's way nicer, again, than having just a bare metal handle. Obviously, there are different sizes. 
I kind of think, and I could totally be wrong here, but since the blue wasn't available and wasn't even listed, I'm sort of of the mindset that those might be getting phased out or they're discontinuing them or maybe it's just DRPDs clearing out stock. I don't know, but it's kind of a shame because I could use quite a few more. Sometime I really need to like set down and take a look at the in shanks on all the files and kind of be like, okay, this is what I need and place an order. But again, I would love to have them color coded personally. Uh, just preference there. And again, people never do this. You know, it's almost like a machinist thing. <laughs> so most machinists don't do it either. Um, a lot of times space is an issue. But you should never, like, store files, you know, like, on top. Think of, like, when you buy a set, even if it's a cheap file set, it usually comes in some stupid plastic uh, holder, and the plastic comes unstitched, you know, the second time you take the file out or put it in. There's a reason for that, and it's not just, like, retail packaging display. You want to, in a perfect world, keep the files isolated from one another. Is it the end of the world? No, but in a perfect world, that's what you would do. So think of all your fancy like toolbox organizers and uh, foam. That's actually one of the best uses of foam in my opinion because it's actually fulfilling two things. One, makes it easy to see what you've got, what's out, what's missing. And uh, obviously you can select the files easier. But two, it protects the files. It actually serves a real purpose there. When you come in and you do a file roll, you know, that's fine, but if you're frequently using files, that kind of sucks, and then you have to hang the mass of things somewhere, and it just turns into a nightmare. So, uh, realistically, like, if you open toolboxes, even if it's like a little Kennedy at LA or something, and you've got the file drawer or the drawer that has files, they're just piled up, <laughs> whittling away at one another. Uh, I think most toolboxes are going to be set up the same way, but again, in a perfect world, you would have them isolated, and the handle kind of serves to do that. Now, yes, you know, if you have them side by side and the drawer shuts, friction, moving the box, they're going to come across each other, but just if you want to take things to the next level, it's something to keep in mind. So, uh, for what it's worth, the PB Swiss handles are super nice, in my opinion, uh, and also they're very, very economical. So. If those could come back or be stocked, and like even if we just did the same colors as the magnets, uh, I'd be super happy. <laughs> so, uh, I might have to look into that in email or something, but uh, yeah. Uh, if you're living life without a file handle, just buy one, you know, for your most frequently used file and see what you think, and you'll probably be back to get more, especially since they're affordable. So, uh, anyway, let's continue on here with this mythical roll of PB Swiss. This is something that I've wanted for a long time. It was just always hard to get. It's kind of like the long KTC we showcased the other night. Uh, it's something I wanted and wanted, but it was just never in stock. <laughs> here we are with this, the coin driver, right? Multiple, multiple uses for these. Some people pry. Uh, I sort of always wonder if they fit like Zeus fasteners or something. Uh, the other things, certain batteries, certain interior clips. It's just, uh, you can kind of dub this as the coin driver. I believe that's the official name. Uh, if we take a look at it, you can see the part number there, PB8125.9-45. This is the short one. There's also a longer one. Uh, this one's going to set you back $18.35. they are kind of more spendy than I would have thought they would be. I think that longer one's 20 plus. Uh, file handle, just before I forget, is $3.95. So again, you know, they're not bad at all on that front. But, uh, I'm not quite sure where exactly this will be utilized. One of the things about this, if you have a use for this, and you're kind of on the fence. Realistically, you could probably get a driver cheaper, but if this is something that you need or use, grab it and you'll get a feel for their Swiss grip handles. And from there, you can decide like, okay, you know, let's let's place an order for some drivers now. But uh, you can see right there, it's sort of designed. Yeah, you might think it's slotted, but let's be realistic. You're not going to be able to put that in many standard screwdriver holders, so maybe a pouch or something. Uh, but yeah, if you use these, you know about them. If you don't and you think it would be handy for anything, including plugs you've seen, that's kind of one of those deals. It's always like, picture a plastic button. Let's get that out of the way. Spoiler alert, it's empty. But uh, if I come and pry this up, it's not quite this large, right, as the VHA cup holder. But the thing is filthy, my apologies. Uh, but essentially, you know, like if we had... I don't know, just like this washer, okay? And now just make it about, 
I don't know, a third of the circumference of the coaster and then make it plastic and put the little line in it and you like if you put this screwdriver in right you've got this massive slot like from here to here and you're like slipping and you try to turn and you got such a narrow point of contact inevitably what happens you're going to turn it and you're going to broach the plastic right you're going to wind up stretching it <laughs> and all the tension is centered here and so you kind of scuff it up a little this is going to fit that much, much better. I think there's marine applications for this stuff as well. But uh, what will I wind up doing with it officially outside of plastic trim panels? We'll just have to find out because now I've got it and I can play around with it. I don't think it would be terrible for like prying. Now, if you're going to use it for dedicated, if you have a set purpose, uh, go to town with it. The, okay, I remembered. This is what I wanted to do with this when I would always try to buy them and couldn't get them. When you, I don't know how many buy people buy like the, uh, you know, like the good race jugs, like the five gallon ones. Uh, when you come in, usually Sunoco and VP, those are going to be your main, you know, OEMs of them. They've got those stupid little caps, right? And you have to pay extra or wait for a deal to get like the flex spout, which you need. You know, I do have the funnel, but, uh, you know, you don't always have the funnel with you, like if it's in the back of the truck or in a car or something. Uh, this is for people with old cars and racy stuff that, you know, don't have fuel gauges or functional gauges, you know, take it for what you will. But they've got these plastic caps and nothing fits them. And I'm wondering if this would do it. I'm so glad I remember that because I knew there was some like explicit reason that I wanted to get that. And that's exactly what it was. So, uh, we'll bring these guys in just to make it more of a festival here. But that uh, brings us to the next PB Swiss roll. Again, this one dates back to the summer sale. And uh, it's going to be the most expensive item as well. And it's right here. they got to unfold, unfold, roll out. And I think you're going to like this one. Oh, yeah. So, how have I had this for that long and just now getting around to it? I don't know, man. Super busy at work. You know, other videos, trying to work on the truck when I get more than like 40 minutes at a time. Uh, this thing right here is PB Swiss's part number 8510.R-100. The 100 is going to refer to this shank right here. 100 millimeter, 4 inches. It's essentially a standard driver. They do have a 30 millimeter. You can't really call it stubby. I want to say it's roughly the same handle. It's just going to stop like here, you know, right? Picture one fourth of this would be 25 millimeters, and then just a tick past would be your 30. Um, a lot of people might start with that as a ratcheting driver. I chose to start here because it's closer to a standard driver. And so many times, in my opinion, you know, like the stubby, let's come in and just, this Hazette is here, so we got a hexanimic here. If this was the driver that you had with you, just picture this as a ratcheting one with, you know, this is the bit holder and that's my little standard bit. If I need to tighten a screw here, boom, this is great. Now, put this in an enclosure, right? Like it's down in a fuse box or a panel or something, and that seat's there, but look at the gap, okay? We've got to go like double the distance or three times the distance to get there. So in my opinion, unless you have a specific application, if it's just general purpose, investigative research, you know, going to try it out, what have you, I think the route to go is to get the longer shaft. I wouldn't, wouldn't tell you to buy like an 8-inch, kind of the happy medium. And with that, I'm able to get here instantly. I can also go to things close, and it's very unlikely that you're ever going to have a situation where this would impede you, and that one would get you access, right? Because it's not a stubby ratcheting screwdriver, it's just a shorter shank. Uh, in fact, the price is literally $5 difference. By the way, if you like the gloves, Use discount code Lone Star, save 20% over at Alpha Gloves. Don't make a dime off that, I just tell you, so you have gloves that don't suck. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so $63, I think, will get you the shorter one. And then for $68, this was actually $71.50, but I was literally just on DRPD, and it's $68.50. Um, I noticed that with the KTC Ratchet, it was like a few dollars cheaper, too. Now, of course, we got a discount on top of that. This is probably not something that you have to have tomorrow. 
right? So DRPD does fairly frequent sales, at least quarterly, you know, major holidays, things along those lines. Check the site frequently, put yourself on the mailing list, and when they do a discount, buy what you want to try. Now, if this is a situation where you've got to have it, well, okay, you know, but just be aware that you're giving up, you know, like 10, 15, 20, 25% maybe. Uh, so if you can wait, if you can hold out, if you can get like a fill-in from Harbor Freight or something in the meantime, hold out and you'll save a decent chunk of money, which you can put towards a bits, uh, bit sets, uh, maybe the smaller driver. I, they probably do have a stubby, but just in my real quick punch it in, uh, they were just showing this in the 30 one. So yeah, this is exactly what I picked. If we come over here, grab the Stavilla, complimentary colors. You can see it right there. Again, that's going to be a 100 millimeter four inch shaft on the Stavilla, Villa, and that's about where we're at. So uh, I believe it would be the true overall length on this. I want to say the OAL driver end to the tip is like 228 millimeters. <laughs> so we'll quickly check that. Yeah, you can see right here, it's kind of a little awkward, but uh, we're just about eight and three quarter. And again, 228 you know do the math there but if we come to this point you're looking at about just shy of three inches and if i take you all the way back to where that black plastic meets you can hopefully see that that's dang near dead on four inches making this essentially a standard driver which means we can come over here for people that care c6 or e6 bits are going to drop in this is a casey tool bit of thinks <laughs> and it is magnetic, hopefully you heard that. Here it comes again, okay. The thing that is insane is how well that actually holds. And I don't mean like the magnet is just gonna pull you down and create a black hole. I mean like, look at the play here. Like this has a lot of stick out, like way more than I would like to see. But the thing is, there is absolutely no side to side play whatsoever that's one of the downsides of like a magnetic bit holder or really any bit holder the only one nearby uh, that's a channel lock that's not going to be a good example uh, surely we have one sitting around here with as many screwdrivers as we have <laughs> maybe we don't I, I don't know but you typically are going to have like play you know for example if we come in I'll just make a point to use these glorious little things. And if I were to grab this, right, and just kind of shimmy it, like there would be a lot of slop. This is, it's like a rock. This is to the point, if there wasn't such obvious part lines and you knew that this is a magnet on the end of a ratcheting driver, you might think that was like a machining step. <laughs> they done some vapor blasting or something on the, the bit itself. But no, this is legitimately just, I mean... I have nothing to gain if this looks good or bad. That is an impressive fit right there. And again, this particular one is actually old school bit of things. It's from Philo. And uh, let's come in. I kind of think I might have forgotten to showcase these in a video in part because they're in one of the DRPD special <laughs> tiny envelopes. But uh, if I didn't showcase them, all it is, it's a PZ1 and a PZ2. So that's going to be your posies, right? And we'll take one of their bits, which should, in theory, fit even better. That's, that's like, ridiculously good. Okay. Uh, what that's going to do, it's not the end of the world if you've got, like, some play, but it's going to give you a better end-user experience in terms of driving, braking free, not camming out prematurely. Uh, if you pull back a little too far and you're not making good contact with the screw, there's a myriad of bonuses for having good, tight fitment here. This is why I typically prefer a fixed shaft driver over a multi-bit deal. And But the thing is, that's not always practical. Again, sometimes, like, imagine your job in life, you're a dishwasher or an appliance repairman, right? And you're going out on the job, there's a lady, her dishwasher's acting up, and... <laughs> You know, the circuit board's not lighting up on the oven. So you come in there, and do you really want to take, you know, a T10, a T15, you know, a number one Phillips for this panel, a number two Phillips for that, tons of number two screws that you're going to use, like, an impact for, or do you just want to have a bit set with you? That's where something like the bit check or a bit wallet just it makes more sense than carrying, like, 19 dedicated drivers that you might run into, depending on what 
you know, like model year it is type of thing. So there are merits there. They, of course, do have the insiders here. Uh, I'm not sure PB Swiss has a pop out bit carousel iteration. I know they've got the magazine fold out. Um, if we like this, we might come in and take a gander at that. Right there, you can kind of see that's what their identification is going to be for uh, the magnetic bit holder. But the selling point, again, if you uh, forgot all that time ago when we were talking about it, this is ratcheting. So if you're thinking like, oh, that's not ratcheting, you know, this thing is, and this is rock solid too, which is kind of rare. A lot of times the ratcheting drivers, you don't get that. But if I get that to focus, you'll see, I'll get my hand in there. You'll see that dot, the dimple, and then you'll see this black line. If I tilt it up ever so slightly, you'll see an arrow here. Hopefully you can make that out. And then there's a huge glare, <laughs> but right there. So you've got arrow here and arrow here. Okay. Uh, same thing on the bottom side, which is kind of nice. What I actually like is this. It sort of looks cheesy, but there's a good reason for this. Number one, this is like a stupid good balance point. I try to use my other hand for the lens. So like like I said, this is just almost perfectly placed. The thing that happens there though is you can then select or select. If you have the driver flipped for whatever reason, same concept, right? So fixed position, it's like a rock. I mean you wouldn't think if you didn't know this was ratcheting and I just handed it to you and you're like, oh, this is a PB Swiss magnetic bit hold. Wow, it holds the bit so good and ooh, yeah, you know, super tight. Uh, and then when you're playing around here and you're probably holding it here, you know, as you run something down and then if you accidentally do that and discover it's a ratcheting driver, this is what you would be rewarded with. So keep in mind, you're tightening, you get to the end of the travel, <laughs> and there you go. So I do have to say, it looks and sounds very good. It feels good. Again, keep in mind, you know, like if you're sitting here manually, I would have to do this. This is great. I actually prefer this until you get to a point, depending on what you're working with at the end of the line, that's going to start to get tight. And then you basically, instead of just getting to spin it down like rapidly, you basically have to <clears throat> tighten, <clears throat> tighten. You know, whereas now with the ratcheting in action, we basically come in and there's our work. You get the idea, right? There is not much slop in this thing at all. Uh, current, you know, I don't want to spoil too much, but uh, Ghidorah and Hazette, they license a deal from Roll Gear, right? And uh, that's... That's a pretty good little driver. It's silent. It's a very different design than you see with other brands. Um, there are merits, you know, like Vera's pistol grip, obviously, like if you're doing dash work, you know, stereos, AC vents, whatever. Uh, that has a standing. You think, okay, this is more comfortable, the ergonomics. I think this is going to be a pretty good little ratcheting driver. And uh, I initially, when I got this, I was thinking, you yeah, know, I could take that to work. <laughs> and... Uh, I might, uh, that might be something we do. Um, this is a very cheap, I don't even know. It's currently got 5 16 in it, but this is an adapter. Let me center this back. Okay, so this does have some play in it, but let me tell you, <laughs> this is old, it is well used, it's been in an impact, and I'm pretty sure it's about as cheap of something as you can get, but... Think of this, okay, if you've already got some bits and some quarter drive accessories, you know, wherever you're going you know, to be planning on having this thing, boom, you just created yourself a ratcheting nut driver, which would be very nice, right? <laughs> so, there's lots of possibilities here. Um, I wish I had a better quality... I've got tons of them, just nothing here on the bench, I don't really want to go mining, but... Uh, I think with a better quality one, we'd probably eliminate some of that slot. PB Swiss may make one as well, I don't know. Uh, let's see here, we'll grab the number two posse, it should fit fantastic as well. Listen to this. That is just insane. The, the motion there is because this is not locked down, but if I hold this tight, like, that is crazy. I know, this is going to scare some of you, we're actually going to grab this with the pliers. 
man. The, it's stupid good. I know you should be focused on the ratchet here, but what I have to be amazed by is how tight that is around the bit. So ultimately we're at a point where we've just got to use this and see how we like it versus what else we have. So I can tell you right now, if you like the looks of this, if you're a PB Swiss fanatic, you've been holding out on this. Uh, I know some of you watch my videos in bed with your wife. <laughs> a great gift. Uh, if you're smitten with this thing, they do sell them in cases with bits. That might be the route to go. Also keep in mind, I don't have them here to showcase to you. I'm not sure. I think it, does it open down or does it, I don't know. What they do exactly, I don't have one from PB Swiss, but they do have the bit storage in the little magazine that folds out of the handle. I stayed away from that because I felt like this would be the better, like more comfortable, more ergonomic type of a thing. Uh, that might be like more kitchen drawer fodder, where if you are the appliance handyman, <laughs> you've got all those bits there. Uh, for me, this is kind of like your bread and butter. Yes, you've got to piece together the bits and everything. That's not an issue. Uh, throw this in a bag with your favorite bits. Grab a Tic Tac pack, whatever. Uh, you can go to town with it. But yeah, it does seem pretty dadgum good. Now the thing is, where you can come in handy... I'm sure a ton of you have this, and many of you have probably had it for a couple of years, if not longer. If you have, how are you liking it? How has it held up? What are you doing with it? And perhaps most importantly, what do you have to compare it to? So, are you comparing this to Vera? Are you comparing it to something from Via? Are you comparing it to old school USA? Uh, do you have some like unlabeled POS from Taiwan that actually has turned out to be amazing and you love it better than brand name stuff you've tried since. Uh, are you throwing down a Williams that you picked up because it was like a third the price of the Snap-on ratcheting driver? Uh, even though the Snap-on driver is like an old school design and has the bits thrown in the handle, is that better than this? And you need to have used both of them or had experience with them, preferably ownership and usership. Uh, to make the best qualifying statements there, but I do love how easy this is to articulate. Dead center, which this functions in as a normal screwdriver. This might be the most impressive thing on the bench, is just, this is a ratcheting driver, but right now, I would never know that. Like, <laughs> again, if I just handed this to one of you and you're like, whoa, a PB Swiss magnetic bit holder. Like this thing, there's just absolutely no play. Typically with a ratcheting driver that locks in like this in the middle, uh, you're gonna have like slop. This is just as good as a fixed driver in my opinion. And again, if you're trying to have an all-in-one tool, there's a lot of times like I wanna come out of ratcheting and just <clears throat> final tighten it. Maybe it's a bad screw down here and you need all the leverage you can get and you want to do that with a lockout position. Sort of a three-in-one, if you will, and uh, I'm excited. The only thing this doesn't do is provide us torque settings, essentially. <laughs> so, uh, it would be interesting. I need to go back. Like I said, I've had this sitting around for a long time. My apologies. But... Uh, if you could couple this with the insider, you know, like when I say that, I don't mean the magazine fold out, but the one that pops out and it was a screw on cap, that might be good. Although you might accidentally pop the cap. I don't know. That's why there's merits to this and bits. You know, you just have a solid handle and no issues. All your ratcheting action is up here. Uh, it's balanced really well. This feels great in hand. The handle may be a little bit larger. Like, let me grab this to show you. This is my uh, number two Phillips. This is a bigger handle, and I love this. My complaint here is that this is too small. This handle has taken care of that. This is a fantastic size. If I could get this size of a handle on their number two, I think I'd be pretty happy. I might need to change a few things, but this in terms of hand fitment, fantastic. So, that was our haul. We got the coin driver, finally. We'll see how it works if I come up with any crazy uses. Got another file handle, literally just one. I kind of wanted to see what the red looked like before committing. 
and we got this glorious thing right here. Had to time that out because we had like 40 seconds, didn't want to have to rush through it. <laughs> so yeah, what I want to know from you is what of this do you have? What have you used? What would you use that for? What would you do with this? How does this compare to what you have if you have used it? File handles, do you prefer this style? Do you just goff at anything that's not wood? You say, I'm a man and I don't need a file handle. <laughs> Whatever the story may be, feel free to leave your thoughts down below. Again, this thing is just... The ratchet seems great. Okay, like there's minimal, minimal play in it. But what's the most impressive to me is actually, and I know this is lame because it's a ratcheting driver, but the bit fitment and the lack of play, and then how good this is in the locked position. Again, you literally wouldn't have any idea this was a ratcheting screwdriver in this locked position and that's that says a lot so ultimately the ratchet action we need to actually use it in the real world to get a feel for how well we like it bench impressions i think we're gonna be fine so uh any other complaints here yeah i would love to get this in a blue handle an orange handle a green handle uh you know but i get it red is kind of like the official company colors and makes sense can't fault them too much there uh Nice little mechanism. Again, I do love the landing spots here. It makes it super easy. I would imagine, heaven forbid, you had greasy or oily hands when you were using this little gym. That would still be super easy to articulate. So it's got a lot going for it. We just need some seat time out in the wild. So with that said, I don't even want to set it down. I just want to keep it in my hand here. <laughs> so, with that said, LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. With that said, I do hope you enjoyed, learned a little something, got some ideas for Christmas, or you know, just pick it up just because, or you need it, <laughs> whatever, whatever reason or excuse you need to apply there. But it seems like it's going to be fantastic. Can't wait to use it. We'll see how that goes. Once I find a better fitting file for that handle, it's going to be much appreciated. But uh, yeah, if you have not already, I encourage you to subscribe. If you subscribe, ring the bell, grab your PB Swiss file handle, stab them on two files, spin them simultaneously while keeping this in the locked position. While you tighten the screw underneath the dash of your 69 Charger jumping across the creek, YouTube just might notify you that we got new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, 9 a.m. Texas time. With that said, thanks so much for watching. I hope I catch you back here for more action from the show.